Just recently, an idea came to my mind. The thought was, you can't be blessed and demon-possessed at the same time. I repeat that. You cannot be blessed and demon-possessed at the same time. Now, the idea came as a result of a woman that is considered bipolar and schizophrenic. In the Bible, is considered demon-possessed. There are people that tamper and dabble into the black arts. They open themselves up to unclean spirits. They open themselves up to evil spirits. But then because they accumulate wealth, or because they have food in their cupboards and a place to stay, they would firmly exclaim that they are blessed. They would refer to themselves as being blessed. Well, you cannot be blessed and demon-possessed at the same time. Now, I created a t-shirt with that saying. If you're interested in getting that t-shirt, visit Fearless Wear online. That's fearlesswear.online. Fearless, W-E-A-R, dot online. And get that shirt. But you cannot be blessed and demon-possessed at the same time. Now, I hear people that tamper and dabble into wicked, witchcraft, and other forms of dark art, Ouija boards, tarot cards, black magic. And they would even say and refer to themselves as being blessed. Now, I firmly Overstand that even in the demonic realm, there are those that refer to themselves as blessed, but their blessedness is not the same blessedness and it's not of the same spirit of Christ. When they say blessed be in Wicca, they're not saying blessed be with the same spirit that those that follow Christ would say, I am blessed or blessed be. It's an entirely different spirit. And that's where many so-called Christians stumble and fall into a demonic snare because they allow words to dictate their movement. They hear a Wiccan say, bless be. And I'm sure somewhere, somewhere in their spirit, they know that they are not referring to the Most High. But I have a scripture for you. Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter, reading the 15th to the 18th verse. And it reads as follows. And what concord hath Christ with Belial, meaning the devil? Or what part has he that dwelt, that believeth with an infidel? In other words, what part does a believer has with an infidel? They have nothing in common. I'll read that 15 verse again. And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? The 16th verse read, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. In other words, your body is the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them 
Now stop. There's people that were questioned as infidels or unbelievers that were questioned and have questioned, where is God? They ask, where is God today? Can you find God? Where is he? But according to the scripture, it says, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. So there are many in the church that Christ has not received. Yes, you're going through the formalities of going to church, Bible study, prayer study, for the Church of God in Christ, YBWW, Bible, Bible band, prayer study, revivals. But Christ has not received you. The Most High has not received you. The 18th verse read, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. The next scripture will be taken from 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, reading the 15th to the 20th verse, and it reads as follows. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. So, you cannot be blessed and demon-possessed because light and darkness cannot dwell together. You either love one or you hate the other. The Most High says I will have you to be hot or cold. Because if you're lukewarm, he'll spew you out of his mouth. The 17th verse says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sins against his own body. The 19th verse read, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple? Of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye are, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. The 21st says, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now that 20th verse is powerful. It's very simple, but it's powerful because it says, For ye are bought with a price. Christ is the sacrifice for our sins. That was the price when he paid on Calvary's cross. The Bible says, Therefore glorify God in your body. What does that mean to glorify God in your body? Be mindful on what you do with your body. You just don't do anything because you're grown enough to do it. You have to be mindful of the places you go. The things you speak out of your mouth. The things you touch and handle. How you think. Everything should be giving God the praise and the glory. So you glorify God with your life and how you live. It says, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, 
which are God's. You belong to God, so you glorify God in your spirit. You don't allow the spirit of darkness to possess you. And that happens quite often nowadays among the so-called black Americans dabbling into the dark arts, dabbling into witchcraft and tarot. And you call yourselves psychics. Someone just recently asked me a question. If the devil is able to prophesy, Where do you think the so-called psychics come from? He's very limited and his followers are very limited to what they can know, even in the spirit realm. They're very limited. Even in Christ, you're very limited in what you should know. Because having certain information just knowing it could cost you greatly. Like in Enochia Magic, just knowing the angelic names that's in the angelic watchtower, there were people that just knowing the names were drawing those spirits, attracting those spirits to themselves. Remember the movie Ghosts with Whippy Goldberg and how she was playing the role of a psychic and was uh, jacking people for their money? Well, she tapped into something because Someone passed away and he was trying to contact his wife that was still living. And he manifested himself to her. And she became frightful. She couldn't handle it. She didn't have no gift. But because she was tampering into the dark arts, she opened herself up to things that was far beyond herself. So you have to really be careful what you open yourself to because when you start channeling spirits, you call yourself um, stargazing or gazing in the candles and mirrors and opening portals. You have no idea what will come through those portals. You have no idea. And you wonder why there's so much disaster going on in your life and in your home. You wonder why your children and those around you become victims just being in your presence. See, there's certain people that just by you being in their presence, by you hanging around, you can become blessed because they are blessed. And then there are those that are cursed. And if you stay in their company too long, you yourself will begin to start reaping those cursed benefits. These people, especially in a church that feel that they can bless a cursed person, but whoever God curses, you cannot bless. So you can continuously give and give and give and uh, give them your energy, your time, and you're trying to help them and lift them up. Yeah, you may have a good heart and you're trying to help this individual, but then the more you help them, have you noticed the more you help them and the more you give them, it's like they have a hole in their soul that when you put in it just leaks right out. And you find that you are draining your own energy. They become spiritual vampires, sucking the life force and the energy out of you. And then when you look around, you notice that your bank account is dwindling. 
your life is now falling into struggle zone. You're now having problems in your relationship with your children. And then you start doing spells, lighting candles, trying to figure out what's going on, asking unclean spirits to guide you and to aid you. But yet, sometimes you just need to separate yourself. Get far away from certain individuals that have been cursed by the Most High. And in many cases, you know that they are cursed just by their conversation and how they feel about the church and how they feel about religion and how they feel about the Bible and Christians and Christianity. And they become so angry and bitter when they talk about it. That's a cursed soul, a cursed individual. And yes, you may love them as a friend, as a loved one, as a family member. But whoever God curses, you cannot bless. And if you have spiritual discernment, the Most High will reveal to you to back away. This is another show, Supernatural. And I like watching these movies because they have a lot to offer. There's a lot of um, realness in those movies mixed with Hollywood. And I remember Dean and Sam went to this woman that was a seer. And while she was trying to channel spirits, there's a, uh, an angel, Castiel, if you guys watch Supernatural, told this woman to go back, that she couldn't see him. But she was persistent. Who are you, Castiel? No, show me your face, show me your face. And he's telling her to go back. He's communicating with her, go back. And the woman was persistent. And all of a sudden, you've seen all these flames come from her eyes and she ended up blind. She ended up blind because she was tampering into things that she didn't understand. Places she really didn't need to be. And she was warned. So she was a cursed soul. And there's many like that in reality. That's TV. But in reality, there's a lot of cursed people out there. And if you notice, you hang around certain people, things begin to happen in your life. Pulling you down. But then there are those that are blessed in your presence. The final verse of scripture I want to read is 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, reading the 13th to the 15th verse, and it reads, Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. The 14th verse says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, a lot of church folk like to relate that to just relationships or marriages. You're not supposed to marry or get with an unbeliever. But this is far beyond just marriage and relationships. This is also friendship, associations. Even if it means your own family, if they are unrighteous, if they are unbelievers, the Bible says to not be unequally yoked together with them. The best thing to do is be an example from a distance. You show love from a distance. Doesn't mean you have to be their friend and hang out with them. So the 14th verse says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship 
has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? The 15th and final verse says, And what concord has Christ with Belial? But what part has he that believeth with an infidel? So you can't be blessed and demon possessed at the same time. So if you're dabbling and tampering into witchcraft and whatever form of dark art, Satanism, and you referring to yourself as blessed, that's deception. You're deceiving no one but yourself because you're cursed in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, or as some say, Yeshua the Messiah. So I'm going to end right here and I invite you to go to my my website and purchase some Mercs or better yet, you can find it in the link in the description box on the bottom. But it's fearlesswear.online. Fearless, W-E-A-R dot online. And get your shirt, just made it. You can't be blessed and demon possessed at the same time. So feedback, tell me what you think. Until next time, I'm fearless.